and welcome to 10%. You know, it seems like in an age when people want to do something other than build their life but take their life, we need to have organizations that teach young LGBT people that there's hope. And one of those organizations is Lyric. Tonight we're speaking with Jody Schwartz, Executive Director. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's been five years here. that you've been Executive Director at Lyric. It has. Have things gotten better for our, our young people? I think so. Um, I think, you know, what's always really interesting to me is the number of times when a young person comes to Lyric and gets involved in one of our programs and says, this is so fabulous. I actually, have, I, before I came here, I didn't know any gay people, even in San Francisco. It, I mean, it really is quite stunning to me and a reminder of how important it is for organizations like Lyric to exist. Because I always say to people, there are going to be young people coming out every day, and mm -hmm. we need to be here for them. Now, Lavender Youth Recreation and Information Center has been around for how long? 22 years. And in that 22 years, how many young people do you think have come through your doors? Thousands. I mean, each year uh, we work with about 500 young people um, in a variety of ways and outreach to another 1,500. Um, in workshops, and we do different community events, um, but thousands of young people. I mean, if we just look at the number of youth who self-identify as LGBTQQ in the San Francisco Unified School District, 3,000. So we have 3,000 young people in just our public schools, um, and Lyric also works with older, uh, what we call transition age youth, Right, and let's talk a little bit about definitions because the definition of youth sure. is kind yeah. of open to interpretation. What does Lyric mean by youth and then transitional age? Sure. So we work with youth up to 24, <coughs> and partly that is because we often step in where the institutions that exist for young people fail to be able to support LGBTQQ youth the way that other youth may have support, whether it's family, school, public health, now, all the institute, religious institutions, those institutions exist, support young people to, to become successful adults. And so mm -hmm. oftentimes we're, we're, ha we're playing that role for them. So it's really important. Folks say, really up to 24? Well, if you think about it, for a young person who may have a really strong family, be very successful in school, be able to go to college, think about all the adults, the supportive adults that help that young person succeed. And our young people in the LGBT community don't have that all the time. You know, this has been a, a challenging year. It seems like every couple of years there's some event that happens to a young uh, lesbian, gay man, member of the transgender community that galvanizes attention. I mean, we all remember Matthew Shepard being strung up uh, on a barbed wire fence in Wyoming. And we all remember Gwen Arujo. Mm -hmm. And just in the last few months, we've had this spate of teen suicides fed by the internet and fed by bullying. I yeah. mean, you know, I don't know about you, but from my point of view, these suicides are hate crimes. Yes. How do you feel? Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 I think that one thing I think that, that it is really important that our young people have the space. Again, like Lyric is a space where they can come in and be who they are fully. And I think it's just a shame when these kind of situations happen that it does make folks really want to close up and, and really, you know, are in pain. And I think it's these opportunities that we have to say to step up just you know folks say I care I want to do something you know step up and say I care mm -hmm. step up and be there for the young people today and ask young people what do you need from me I think sometimes adults too quickly want to come in and save the day save the day respond and and that comes from the best place and I want to say that mm -hmm. it comes from the best place. But sometimes we <clears throat> are so quick to act that we don't just say, what do you need? So what have these suicides made you think about as executive director of Lyric? Did it, did it catch you by surprise or did you say, wow, that was just waiting to happen? 
Well, and, and also, I mean, there are many yeah, that go unreported. Absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, I would love to say this is rare, but it's not. Um, unfortunately, it is a part of our regular um, existence um, in working with youth, and it's um, whether it's suicide in a more overt way or, or death by substance abuse um, or death by um, not being able to make it on the street because so many of our young people are homeless and marginally housed. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this is a reality. And I think this is, it represents not just the invisibility of that experience of young people that results in a suicide, but the general invisibility. And this is, you know, we, we th think back to the early days of AIDS of silence equals death. Well, we're, we are still silent and we are still invisible when it comes to our young people. So what do you mean by that? Do you mean that we as quote unquote adult members of the LGBT community are silent talking about this or literally the LGBTQQ youth are silent about what they're going through? All of the, I mean, I think that, that ad adults, whether it's the LGBT commu community or or other adults in the lives of these children, whether it's at school or families, there is not space to be to to be able to say I'm gay and I love that about myself and I want to share that with you, and I want you to celebrate just as we celebrate all different parts of mm -hmm. ourselves. I think we really need as a community to honestly put some pressure on policymakers and politicians, um, all of them, to invest in the kind of long-term system change that needs to happen in the institutions that have to and need to be hold, held accountable so how do to you, serving how, all of our young people. How do you do that? How do you bring pressure and who do you put the pressure on? Our legislators? Yeah, I mean, I think, unfortunately, you know, in these, in, in these economic times, it, it feels like a lost cause, but we, you know, we do need to put resources. Um, one of my uh, staff, we were talking about this, and, and he's like, you know, we, we hear all the time how people care and want to do something, and what we really need is we need people to care a million dollars much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it really is about whether it's putting pressure in the budgeting process or the legislative process or, um, or, or just galvanizing the community to invest in the kind of reforms that are needed. And the amount of um, work that the, the local San Francisco Unified School District, there's a great program run by Kevin Gogan and Ilsa Bertolini. They do amazing work in the schools and they do it with very little investment from our local school district. Mm -hmm. um, they raise their own money. Um, only recently in the last uh, school board session did they uh, allocate a small amount for a half-dime person. So there's, you know, I think e at each school there's a, a liaison that works with um, uh, the Gay Straight Alliance or other um, LGBT support group in the school um, they're given a small stipend of like $700 on top of all of the work that mm -hmm. they have to do as a full-time teacher. It's just not enough. Um, and one of the ways that we try to, when we go to work in schools, is it's not just about blaming and saying, we need to stop homophobia, you need to stop being homophobic. It's about really getting an understanding and creating a safe space for dialogue at the school to talk about hate speech generally, to say to the young people of color or the young women or the young men and say, what are expressions of hate that have been directed towards you and how does that make you feel? Well, and also, I mean, young people love doing and saying things that are edgy and are going to make the adults cringe. And nowadays that seems to be you know, just a couple of months ago, I remember there was a mm -hmm. campaign about stop saying, oh, that's so gay. Right. I mean, do you honestly feel that some of these young people who are engaged in behavior, that absolutely a young person who's LGBT, queer, or questioning, they would find offensive. Do you think that all these kids that are saying those things are really trying to be offensive? 
I don't think that they understand the impact and it takes sometimes for us to really learn lessons in life, we have to experience it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's the dialogue we try to create when we go into the classroom is to say, let's really explore this. And is this your intent? I mean, it was like the two um, college students that were involved in the taping of the young man who ended up committing suicide. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, if I, am, I can't imagine that they had any idea that what they were going to do, what they did, re would result in, in, in the horrific thing that and happened. And what would you say to them now, if you could speak to them or their parents, what would you say? I think what's really, like, what is the community that you want to be a part of? And when you take actions, when you do things, say things, is it, are you creating truly the kind of community that you want to live in? I mean, we have these conversations with, with youth at Lyric all the time. The, the community of youth at Lyric is very diverse. So just because they all identify somewhere along the LGBTQQ spectrum doesn't mean they all understand one another mm -hmm. at all. And so it's a daily conversation around issues of race, about issues of, um, of um, income, um, there's, you know, a lot of education that goes on around the gender spectrum. There's mm -hmm. folks who identify as gay or <laughs> lesbian or bisexual who don't, like, we don't understand the, what, what your choice around gender identity. And so there's a lot of the ongoing dialogue about how can we not only be here to celebrate who I am, but how can I celebrate who you are and be a better ally? Yeah, and you know, in an age when what might have been considered a prank even 10 years ago because there wasn't the ability to like surprise your roommate mm -hmm. and maybe take a Polaroid. Now it's not a Polaroid, it's a flip camera. Absolutely. And it's there for the world to see. Has the yeah. internet made being young and queer more dangerous? Well, it's, the, it's both. I mean, I was talking a little bit earlier with another one of your guests and, you know, we were talking about how fabulous it is to be able to connect. And yes, Facebook, MySpace, the communities that have been created on the internet have been really wonderful places, particularly for most isolated young people, whether that's isolated in rural communities or mm -hmm. isolated because they're not ready to come out. That's, it's really been great, but there is that flip side to it. I mean, even so, we, we had a young person who did a video around harass, text harassment, mm -hmm. about literally while they're sitting in the classroom, students harassing each other by texting. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about, we have this whole set of community agreements mm -hmm. at Lyric that were created together with staff and young people created them together and we all work to hold each other accountable. In our last few moments, some advice for a young person out there that just, they're feeling bullied, they're feeling harassed, and God mm -hmm. forbid, maybe they're f thinking about taking their own life. What do they do? Where do they go? Find somebody that you trust and talk to them. And, you know, while some of the, while you may feel scared about coming out, it's really important that you know that the people that love you may not be happy. Mm -hmm. um, about and you being gay, but they most folks will still keep loving mm -hmm. you. So take a chance on that teacher, that parent, that friend, that friend. And where do they go online to hear about Lyric? www.lyric.lyric.org. Thank you for your work, Jody. Thank you. Next up, something a little lighter. It's time for the holidays, so it's time for dirty little show tunes. We'll be right back. <laughs> 